Good evening. Welcome to First Friday, the unauthorized news. I'm David Stannard. With this show, we begin a series of hour-long monthly programs devoted to the critical discussion of issues of concern to the people of Hawaii. Each show will air live at this time on the first Friday of the month, and the tape of that show will then be replayed at the same time on successive Fridays throughout the month. What makes this show different is the quality and the independence of our commentators and our guests, all of whom are participants in politics, not just observers. Through them, you'll hear a perspective on the news that you cannot hear elsewhere in the mass media. You'll even hear some news itself that's not reported in the mass media. In addition, you can participate by calling in your comments and questions. Joining me as commentators on this first segment of the show are longtime community activist and grassroots labor organizer, John Wittick. Next to John on his left is native Hawaiian organizer, activist, teacher, and writer, Hanani K. Trask. Good evening, and welcome to our May edition of First Friday, Hawaii's only alternative and completely unauthorized news program. Happy International Workers' Day. Good evening. Welcome to First Friday. I am Hanani K. Trask. Usually David Stannard is here as our moderator, but he is not with us this evening. However, our regular is John Wittick. Good evening, and welcome to First Friday. I'm Joe Shader. Our guest tonight is an organizer, educator, and farmer from the Waianae Coast, Gigi Kokio. We'll be getting to our interview with him halfway through the show. And surprise, surprise, we are live. We're finally live again, uh, coming to you from uh, the studio at Leeward Community College. Hey, welcome to First Friday. I'm Millie Lenny Trask, and I'm going to be your host for this evening. Professors David Stannard and Hanani K. Trask are not here. They're on sabbatical. As usual, John Wittick and Hanani K. Trask are with us to provide their distinguished commentary. Uh, as usual, we have our regular troublemaker commentators, John Wittick and Hanani K. Trask. As usual tonight, uh, we're back with Hanani K. Trask and John Wittick uh, to stir up some trouble. Uh, tell us about what's happening in Hawaii. Usual suspects. Some battle scarred veterans. Our intrepid commentators. Our usual rabble rousers, Hanani K. Trask and John Wittick. Just in case some viewers have been holed up in a dark room for the past week or so and don't know what's been happening. What happened? I've been disgusted by the media. I've been <laughs> saying that for so long and I need somebody else to, to get out there with me. Okay, for the record, that beautiful, brilliant woman in the state trooper sunglasses was attorney Millie Lunny Trask. Hanani K. sister. Uh, younger sister. <laughs> Hanani K. Trask's beautiful younger sister. Neil is my younger, better looking brother. <laughs> but there's another one for Trask number two. I gather that's the uh, better looking younger sister. I, uh, so. I have been asked to run uh, this time and last time around and I'm, I'm not really interested in running in 86. I am very interested in running in 88. When are you going to run for public office? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't, I, I don't think so. Neil Abercrombie will be your campaign <laughs> Then I'm in trouble. <laughs> then I'm in trouble. But let me say, as far as running for public office for the legislature, I still intend to do that. But I will, you know, work with the nation first. Are you and Millie Lunny considering Bishop Estate trustee appointments? Uh, uh, I was hoping that phone call actually was uh, was from the Bishop of States, from the Supreme Court, saying, well, honey, you've got it. Here's a person who identifies himself as a Holly from Milwaukee who's been here since 1952 and wants to see Hanani and Millie Lunny for governor and mayor. He doesn't say now who's going to be governor, who's going to be mayor. Now we already see, have a governor. So. The Hollies, that's the kind of, that's the kind of Holly that we like. I mean, let's follow that kind of Holly. We can have supportive Hollies. I made a little display, David, just to show you. Here's uh, a Calvin Coolidge dollar, uh, what me worry. If you took uh, in the inflation since 1981, when the minimum wage was set at 335, you take off inflation, you don't destroy the whole dollar, and if you take out the fact that Hawaii's cost of living is 25% more than the mainland's, you have this, of course, we should take out the taxes, which even for the poor is at least 10%, it's probably 20%. And you have this, now for 200, 
$200 a month. You can't rent an apartment. You can't buy a car. You can't do anything. You might as well throw that away. One of the negative things, perhaps, of a, a percentage pay hike is for the 40% who are in the bracket, 12000 to maybe $14,000, uh, the pay hike is about 60 to $75 a month. Now, in real terms, that is, comes to about 15 or $20 a week gross. You take out the tax. Uh, and other uh, things that are taken out, and you have about a $12, I'll give you the 50 cents. Uh, <laughs> if you deduct the cost of the inflation, Generous. Generous. the 6% inflation that's anticipated this year and next year, uh, you probably will give me 50 cents or a dollar. Something has bugged me enough uh, so that I like to share. Uh, this, the media and the Congress are looking at what did he know? Okay, what did he know? Okay, if you poll rational people from this time, you would know, I think, that he knew pretty much everything. Well, McFarland says he knew. McFarland worked for him. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. When did he know it? This is the casket uh, for Contra Aid. Why did they do it? Secord, North, Poindexter, uh, Singlob, and this cast of shady characters. Was it service plus patriotism? Or was it dollar sign <laughs> plus power? This is the casket uh, for Contra Aid. <laughs> May it uh, rest in peace forever and good riddance. But who the heck cares? So the Contra Aid fiasco, I think, may come up again, like a lousy meal on an unsettled stomach, like a recurring nightmare, vivid and ugly, or like Dracula rising from his grave. <laughs> and my apologies to Dracula. I think it's very important that everybody have your Reagan year uh, countdown calendar. His last year of office, uh, Ronald Reagan has promised to rise again with his Contra aid uh, freedom fighters. And uh, I think it's up to the rest of us to put this nightmare securely to bed. Thank Good. you. <laughs> I see you have a, a welfare application there, I think, that looks like uh, it was published by Oxford University Press. Maybe you can tell us something about it. David, an uh, inside agent within the DSSH slipped us this new welfare, state welfare application for financial, medical, and food stamps. It is 42 pages long and uh, with incredible questions in it about, is anyone paid you back a loan? Did anyone take you to dinner? How much did they spend? All of these things are deductible. I checked it against the Yale University application for admission. This was 26 pages long, and this is 42 pages. The old application, I guess this is eliminating paperwork and bureaucracy. The old application was a six-page uh, ugly pink application. Uh, so anyhow, can you imagine, though, being a social worker uh, and having to fill this out or someone coming in on welfare? and wanting an application, a hospital worker, a social worker, the, the attitude would be, get the heck out of here. Uh, this, uh, this is where the administration with the heart, government with the heart is going. It's more paperwork, more bureaucracy. Uh, next, next time, David, I'll go into death and taxes, uh, <laughs> your 1040 EZ, a contradiction in terms, and the state uh, tax form. So tune in next week on the tax. The trick-or-treat they received, you took a $10,000 bill <laughs> and you put a stack of them up to the ceiling, you would have $962 million. But David, before I say that, I'd like to uh, point out that my friend Ronnie Reagan uh, celebrated the day by attacking civil rights leaders for using the civil rights movement for their own purpose. So I'd like to consign him officially to the dustbin of history. Mm -hmm. And he will not, he'll not be on our show anymore, David. <laughs> With my expensive uh, <laughs> PR firm myself, I, I designed this chart just to give What's the on the back of that chart? <laughs> it's a strike. <laughs> 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 UPW strikes. That's, what I thought, right? <laughs> That's all I had. <laughs> uh, we weren't using it currently. <laughs> I prepared for you a. Uh, your tax, what you you will be paying this or more probably most of you. This is a thousand dollar bill, slightly inflated. <laughs> it's missing a part of it that inflation already chopped off in one year. But I wanted to uh, deduct now the amount of your taxes that goes to the military and to interest. Five hundred and twenty dollars is military and interest. Though so we can discard that, most of it is a waste anyhow. 
Uh, now your interest to the banks that we borrow so heavily from is another $120, 12% non-military interest is going to go up. Uh, and then uh, if we take all well, health spending, do what you're I know, I'm, I apologize. Well, <laughs> you're facing uh, uh, the American right. icon. This will be the issue on our next show, <laughs> my arrest. <laughs> okay, all health needs. And now we're down to our last $270, which is transportation, welfare, agriculture, food, nutrition, education, small need, housing, <laughs> unemployment, environment, uh, uh, and employment training, okay? And of course, the invasion of Panama, we have to pay <laughs> the support for the Nicaraguan government, the <laughs> Grenada invasion, and of course, counterinsurgency in the Philippines. Oh, right. right. And the CIA, we don't even know. This is my Labor Day hat. <laughs> we, uh, it was great August 31 in Washington, although I wasn't there. <laughs> I wanted to show you the American pie that they <laughs> talked about. Now, this would have been a real pizza, but I understand if I brought a pizza in, they might think we were selling pizza <laughs> on the show. Next month, John Wittick will be back. We have had some calls complaining about his absence. This situation must be brought to an end. Thank you. You're <laughs> I could say more. <laughs> Much <Not> more. <laughs> no. Turn the station. I have, a, I have a response to that, and I'd like to make this response as the Kia Aina. Speaking of public officials, uh, Hanani, I know you have some uh, people you'd like to point to. We tend to point the finger uh, at people, uh, uh, maybe I should go back and re uh, the, the finger, underline it, at uh, people uh, on this show. These people are destroying my culture and they are implicated in it all of those archaeologists who participate in this are committing murder of the Hawaiian past so they can sit there and say I can't help it this is just my job they're prostituting their professional ability and the Bishop Museum is the whorehouse of the prostitutes that's my answer to them Hawaii is a beautiful woman, and she is being used and categorized as a prostitute. She has lovely, uh, gracious talents. The pimp here is the state of Hawaii, the Hawaii Visitors Bureau. They're the ones who transform this beautiful woman that is Hawaii into a saleable, sexualized commodity on the international market of tourism. The Johns, those who come to be serviced by this beautiful woman, Hawaii, are the tourists themselves. I guess I was too busy to get arrested this year. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like you have to get arrested to get any coverage. <laughs> uh, Once again, we saw the zoo uh, that takes place at the end of the uh, legislative session. The, uh, it reminded me of, um, what's his name, the senator from New York uh, talking about uh, uh, various uh, uh, um, uh, governmental policies in which people act as though they've set their hair on fire and they're trying to put it out with a hammer uh, <laughs> by hitting themselves in the head. I hate to be right, but it looks like I was. Isn't it irritating? For <laughs> <laughs> you, that said, I hope you're not a P. Lunny. <laughs> we both are. <laughs> we both well, John, John. I have a t touch of P. Lunny, too. <laughs> I have here, sound like Joe McCarthy, I have here in my hand, okay? You shouldn't screw your students when they're in your classes. And that was, uh, this is that television. was very controversial. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a family show. <laughs> a thousand Darth Vader's lined up the squat teams and then uh, the squat uh, squat, squat. <laughs> squat. <laughs> I like squat better <laughs> squat teams uh, last report Ferdinand Marcos was still dead I heard. <laughs> this uh, note uh, that was handed to me refers to him as being on the shall we say the wrong side of uh, labor issues with mm -hmm. United Airlines and it uh, uses a four-letter word beginning with S and ending with B. Uh, <laughs> but I don't want to use language like, oh. <laughs> John, how could you and, say that? And, uh, speaking of democracy, what might make one think about the uh, President of the United States, uh, usually probably not, but... Uh, <laughs> and to my right, Hanoni K. Trask, Hawaiian activist, uh, director of the United, uh, United States, University of Hawaii <laughs> Center for Hawaiian <laughs> Studies. Speaking of coups... It was a shocker. I think everybody can start by writing a letter to President Bush. Bush, Bush yeah. <laughs> I'll have to admit that Dukakis and Bush have charisma. <laughs> <laughs> they know how to preach, for one thing. They're wonderful speakers. Well, you yeah. call it reverse charisma. <laughs> My question, reggae, why can't we, why isn't it on the radio? Reggae music. Oh, reggae. Reggae. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Is that how he acts? Don't worry, this guy. He talks like, oh, we don't want him on the show. You know, I was the founder of the committee to reduce the frequency of the term dumb howly <laughs> in common parlance in Hawaii. And remember, the number is five. I don't remember the number now. Uh, <laughs> the uh, keen-minded among you tonight may have noticed that this is the second Friday uh, of January, not the first. There are many reasons why we're doing it uh, on the second Friday, the main one being, however, that this is Hawaii. Um, you didn't get that. <laughs> Did you explain that? <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to take it anymore. No, I'm sick of it. This viewer having accurately perceived that John and I are howling. Uh, <laughs> not hard to tell. Yeah, the wonders of television. Uh, this viewer asks, if you were not able, the two of you, if you had not been able to go to the mainland to school, do you think you would have been able to speak English so well? You know, that is such a racist question. Whoever you are out there, um, you're so stupid, I can't believe it. Um, of course, I grew up speaking the way I speak now. The fact of the matter is, what happened when I went to the mainland was I learned how to do black impersonations because I met a lot of black people. Um, you know, English is spoken everywhere in Hawaii. Some people speak with a Filipino accent. Some people speak with a Hawaiian Creole accent. Some people speak like a Howley with a nasal accent. And I have a feeling the person out there is probably a Howley. So if this bothers you, that's really too bad. <laughs> that's my answer to you. Take it away. Charlie. <laughs> my, my answer is, is just about the same, but let me put it in a slightly um, more demure way. <laughs> The numbers they're talking about are is what it's costing you yes. and me and everybody yes. else yes. because of a small group of yep. people who want to yep. stop the Hawaiian Mostly studies. Mostly Hollies. People should two, know that. Two